Hi, um, I'm Kira. I'm the CEO of Safe On Social. I'm really sorry I couldn't be there today. I'm currently working in Europe. So it's very early in the morning here. Um, I'm not sure what even time it is at the PASH conference, but the reason that I'm making this video is on a really important topic that I was going to present on if I had have been at the session, but I'm not. I'm sorry I couldn't make it this year, hopefully next. I am going to talk about a couple of really tricky things. So if I do raise any issues for anyone in the room, please remember to reach out to the PASH team, Kids Helpline, Lifeline or Beyond Blue. What I'm here to talk about is sextortion. It is on the increase and a lot of people don't even know what sextortion is, although I hear about it happening almost daily in my work at the moment. So firstly, sextortion is a combination of um, sex and extortion and that's where the words have merged in together. So it's when someone convinces you to send an image of yourself that's in a sexual kind of context and then use that against you. Or sometimes it can even be a video or a deep fake. There's a whole heap of ways that this can happen. So sextortion usually happens when someone becomes friends with somebody else online and after a long period of time and a lot of flirting and things like that going on, or so it seems, they ask for a video or a photo of you or that they say that they've got one and if you don't pay them a lot of money, they're going to share it. And sometimes they don't even have one, okay? So we need to look at how we can do or how we can protect ourselves in these kinds of situations if they occur. So the most common, I'll give you a couple of case studies actually, the most common ways that I've heard of sextortion happening is when if you have a public Instagram account and one of these criminal gangs sees that public Instagram account, what they'll do is they'll take a whole heap of screenshots of the photos that you've published on that account, whether it be TikTok videos, on a TikTok account, whether they've managed to infiltrate your Snapchat because you've become friends with someone that you don't really know, or they've copied your public Instagram account and created a fake one. And the difference being is the only way that you could tell that it's fake is if they've put like an underscore at the end of your name, or there's been a slight spelling mistake in it. Either way, it can be pretty convincing. And so if a friend of yours has had their account duplicated, it's not hacked, it's actually duplicated. It's a form of identity theft as well. And then what they've done is started sending you direct message requests, pretending to be that person. And then if you got into this little flirty conversation with them because you, you're into them and you think there's some kind of romantic interest going on that's mutual, and you start sharing photos. They might share a photo that is a complete fake that they've ripped off the internet of somewhere. Usually they'll crop a body from neck to knee so you can't see anything identifying and say, see, this is me, now send me a photo of you. Now, if you return a photo or you're set, just send a photo because they ask you for one, yes, that is illegal to do that if you're underage, but what people don't realize is that if you are underage and you are convinced by one of these criminal gangs to send an image, you won't get in trouble with the police if you speak up. We want you to speak up. It is really important that you speak up. If what happens is the last case that I was involved in was actually a 19 year old man who had sent a photo to someone that he thought was a young woman that he met on a dating app. And what they did was they said, we've got this photo, we're gonna share it with your workplace because they'll cross check with all of your other social media. This is why we, it, we're not being the fun police. This is why we're constantly saying it's really important to make sure all of your privacy settings are in place so this doesn't happen to you. Because they were able to find out where he worked, okay, what he did on the weekends and infiltrate a whole heap of different groups. And so they said to him, if he didn't start paying loads and loads and loads of money, he, they would start sharing that image and destroy his professional reputation. So he'd actually paid $8,000 out before he spoke up to his mom, who got in touch with the police and they were able to help. Now, if you're an underage person, he was 19, okay? So that's a bit of a different scenario. 
But if you're under the age of 18, I've had multiple cases where this happens. I can guarantee you the police are going to help you. You are not going to get in trouble because you sent one of those photos. What they're going to say is that was really silly and that was that is illegal and do not do that again. And they're going to go after the perpetrators. So it's safe to speak up if you become a victim of sextortion. So one of the other cases I worked on recently was a 15 year old boy. He actually had shared an image with what he thought was a girl from his local community because the fake Instagram account that had been set up looked exactly like her. They'd been chatting for quite some time. He'd let her into a huge big group chat that was happening across the whole community, across multiple schools in his community. And when he did share a full frontal nude of himself with what he thought was this girl after she asked for it online, she started sharing it in the group chat when he said that he couldn't pay the 500 US dollars that they demanded, and I'll say they because it was a criminal gang behind it, that they demanded within an hour, they started sharing it on the group chat. So this boy was smart enough just to not respond at all and go and tell his parents who immediately got in contact with the police and they were able to keep him safe. He didn't pay out any money and they were able to shut the whole thing down. There was a tiny little bit of embarrassment, but all of his friends knew what had happened and he's moved on from that completely now. But what we need to remember is that it is safe to speak up. If someone asks you for a photo, Remember, if you're underage, just say, I'm underage. There's absolutely no way I'm sending you an image. We need to be really cautious because sextortion is on the increase. We also need to remember that it is illegal. But I want you to 100% remember that if you do fall victim to sextortion, that it is absolutely safe to speak up. The police are going to help you. You can jump online and report it to accce.gov.au, which is the Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation. They help with this stuff day in, day out. It's not scary. They're very, very helpful. I know you're going to feel embarrassed, but don't forget to speak up. That's the most important thing you can do here. If you have a friend who you suspect is talking to someone that they may not 100% know, or you have a friend that is a victim of sextortion as well, make sure that you tell them that it's safe to speak up. Like this can happen to anyone. I even had a 45 year old man in the cybersecurity industry contact me a couple of weeks ago because it had happened to him. And he wanted to make sure that he had lodged the um, complaints and what he had to do in all of the right places to make sure that it can be taken down. The other thing that can happen from time to time is you can be a victim of a deep fake. So these people, again, these criminal gangs will crop your face off a profile shot and post it straight onto a nude body and say, we've got this image of you, even though it's completely fake. And if you don't pay us money, we're going to start sharing it. So another tip is always in your profile shots, never have a profile shot where you're up close and personal and straight into the camera like this. Always make sure you're wearing glasses or you put a hat on, your face is tilted slightly to the side. A whole heap of ways that it's going to be harder for someone to perfectly crop your face and morph it onto the body of somebody else. But also remember that in Australia, we are lucky enough to have the eSafety Commissioner's Office. You can report things to eSafety.gov.au if you are the victim of sextortion and don't want to reach out directly to the police. They will be able to help you. If you are the victim of what we call image-based abuse, which is if you have shared a nude with someone that you know and then they turn around and use it against you or they share it with their friends or they forward it to somebody else and all of those things that are highly illegal, you can also report that to esafety.gov.au. If you are the victim of a deep fake, report it to esafety.gov.au because they can go and help you get it taken down if it's being distributed all over the place. So what I've done is written this all out in a whole heap of cheat sheets for you so that you know what to do when things go wrong. And if you have any questions at all, please reach out to the team at PASH or me um, through my email address, which is on the bottom of all of those cheat sheets. And I hope this has been helpful 
and thank you very, very much for having me. Again, sorry I wasn't there today, but I hopefully will make it next year. Thank you.